Welcome back to Nerf Game Theory. I am still Captain Xavier, and today I shall be pontificating, waxing philosophically, about safety standards. Why they're important, why they exist, why they need to be enforced, how you can go about formulating your standards, um, and from the player's perspective, why it's important to adhere to them as well. So, safety standards, in my opinion, exist to prevent serious injury in the event of a accident or a catastrophic failure. We don't look at best case scenarios, nor do we truly look at worst case scenarios. It's about risk assessment. How likely is this to cause an injury? And how serious would that injury be? And you balance that out. Uh, now, things are like, things that are very common, the reason that eye protection is pretty much a standard across our hobby is because the likelihood of you getting hit in the face when we're constantly behind cover and just sticking our heads out, there's a real good chance you're gonna get shot in the face and the potential damage that, that that can do. Even a stock blaster at close range can do, per, can do eye damage. You can scratch your cornea, you can detach a retina. Um, from high-powered blasters, you could have permanent eye lo loss of vision in an eye from, a, from a, an unlucky shot or, you know. And so we require eye protection. That is a risk that we're like, okay, the likelihood is high enough, the risk is dangerous enough, we're gonna have a safety standard specifically to prevent that particular problem. Now, Another possibility is you could have a dart, you know, you have your mouth open when someone shoots a dart and it goes down your throat and you choke on it and you die! That's a, a, a worst case scenario, but it is unlikely enough that we, we don't mean, okay, you gotta wear a full mask so darts don't go in your mouth. We don't do that. Um, we also, we run around, and if you're carrying a long arm blaster and you trip and it goes into the dirt and the buttstock comes up and hits you in the throat and collapses your trachea and you die! That's also a risk that we consider unlikely enough that it's negligible. Even though the, the potential serious risk is death, we still allow running. Now there are times when we don't. Uh, Fort Flagler, for example, or Fort Warden, it's all cement and rusty metal. We prefer you don't go sprinting down the hallway with the metal bits uh, and the railings for a three-story drop that are hundred-year-old railings and probably break if you ran into them. There we don't allow the running. At Fort Borst, we almost always allow running, except if it was raining the day before, or is currently raining, we've had that, and there's a lot of mud on the ground. We're like, okay, in these particular areas it's muddy, please be careful, we don't want people twisting their ankles or slamming into trees or whatnot. Um, but in general, you know, running is, is fine. Now, climbing trees, usually not, but your event might allow it. That might be something that, that's a risk you're willing to accept. That's where you're gonna have to figure out what, what do we consider too risky, what do we consider too dangerous, and set your standards. But it is very important that your safety standards be explained and transparent and easy to get a hold of. You don't want people showing up that don't know the safety rules because your safety rules might include things like FPS limits, age limits, personal protective equipment, and it's entirely possible that someone who hasn't read the rules will show up to your event all excited to play and then discover they can't. They don't have the gear, their, their blasters are all too powerful, uh, they're, they're too young, whatever. Um, so make sure that that's posted and make sure that the reasons are posted. It may seem common sense to you, but you setting the FPS limit at 125 when all the other events do 150, why? Well, what was your reason? It might be a good reason. It might not be. And they might convince you that it wasn't and you will then change the rules and now you have a new rule and that's the one you enforce. Um, but make sure you've explained it because if, if something fails for safety inspection, knowing why might then allow them to, to redo it and do it safely this time or to learn what they need to learn so that they can do things safely, or, or what have you. So the reasons are very, very important to make sure that everybody knows. Um, these, these concepts apply to both equipment, obviously, you know, blasters, melee weapons, um, darts. They also apply to actions, running, climbing, you know, playing at night, stuff like that. Um, personal protection equipment. It also applies to people. If you have someone that just has serious anger management issues, they might be a safety concern. Um, and you might need to talk to them. And you might have to tell them, that, look, until you can get this under control, you, you can't play. Uh, same thing with, like, if someone is always swinging too hard with melee. You know, you've talked to them multiple times and they just can't seem to not go berserk and wail on people. You might have to tell them, look, no melee for you, dude. You're, you're not safe. Never allow anything on the field unless you are convinced that it is safe. You're not looking at, are you convinced that it's dangerous? Rather, are you convinced that it's safe? Because in this hobby, one of the things we do that I'm, I really like about this hobby is we err on the side of caution. 
A lot of the advice that we give is, in my opinion, errs on the side of caution, and I like that. I would rather not allow something that actually was safe and have somebody get annoyed at me than allow something that wasn't safe and have someone get hurt. So err on the side of caution. Um, also, education is very important in this. If, if the reason you don't, you're not convinced that it's safe is that you don't know enough about it, learn about it or find someone who does. This is one of the things that comes up with HPA all the time. A lot of groups don't allow HPA because the people running the event don't know enough about it to be able to tell whether your HPA build is safe or not. You can build a really dangerous HPA setup. Uh, both in how hard it hits, but also in the, the likelihood of a catastrophic failure being really, really dangerous. But you can also build ones that are absolutely safe. But if the person running the event doesn't know the difference, they shouldn't allow it. Because they're not sure that it's safe. Now, they should then do their best to learn or to find an expert who does know and delegate it to them. Say, this is the person who you have to show your HPA setup. I'm convinced that they know what they're doing. They know how to, they're the expert on this. If they say it's okay, then it's okay. If they say no, then it's no. You can delegate that if you don't know the information. Try not to let ignorance be the deciding factor in your safety standards. It should be based on knowledge. Um, I, I'm not convinced this is safe. I know what I do consider to be safe. I don't know that this is. Um, work from there. This is going to come up with all of the, the future game mechanics videos, um, ammo types, shields, melee weapons, because what you allow and whether you should allow something is going to be something you're going to have a standard around. Like homemade ammo, homemade blasters, homemade melee weapons, homemade shields. Um, you're going to want to have safety standards on what do you allow and what don't you allow. Now there's, there's game mechanic sides of that. We don't want shields that are so big they're impossible to, to shoot around. That's not a safety concern. We don't want shields that have pointy edges. We don't want melee weapons that are made out of materials that can crack and become sharp. Uh, we don't want darts that are potential to come apart or have dangerous materials inside them. Um, things like that. Those are the kind of safety standards we're looking at. Um, and again, if somebody brings something that they've made at home and you look at it and you're, you're concerned about whether this would be safe in the event of, of an accident, you know, the, the weapon breaks, will it become dangerous? If I hit way too hard, is this going to cause concussions? Is it going to you know, break noses? Is it going to break fingers? Um, what are the concerns? If you have a concern, explain your concern to the person and why you're, you're choosing not to allow it and then give them the opportunity to either demonstrate that no this really is safe or if I make these changes would it be okay and and, and, and go from there so primary concern as the person running the event should always be safety because you are responsible and potentially liable if someone gets hurt but at the very least you are responsible if you allow something dangerous and someone gets hurt that's on you so be cautious but don't get ridiculous. Again, there's worst case scenarios that you don't want to go into, but there are some things where there's a reasonable belief that this might cause an injury, then, then don't allow it. So that's my thoughts on safety standards. Next, we will be going into some more interesting and fun game mechanics next year. So stay tuned for that. And thank you for watching.